So this is going to be the start of a new series on my channel. I'm going to apply whatever basic business knowledge I have across the board to a few different esports teams, organizations, even if they end up being Twitter accounts, I'm going to apply my knowledge across them as best as I can. I'm going to do an in- I haven't exactly done too much brainstorming and I think the best way I'm going to do it is I'm going to- let me think. What kind of name a series where I'm going to decide if teams are either good or bad? Hmm. Got it. Got it. I'm a genius. We have either business or brutal. Fairly straightforward. There are so many different ways that I can think about uh, how I apply my business knowledge to an esports team. Because a lot of the time. I'm only going to see the, the social media surface. We're, I will never really get to see the internal side of things unless a team so invites me in. I'm Everything that I do is from a outsider's perspective. And that, sh that is all it should be noted as. If anyone thinks it's any more than that, then they're just... They're quite simply wrong. This What I'm saying is an opinion. It is purely opinion-based. None of it is fact. So, take of that what you will. But bear in mind, I will try and back up with my, my opinion, apologies, with as much fact and as much uh, substance as I can. So my first team that I want to analyse in the first episode of Business or Brutal is Enterprise. Yeah. No one's cheering because it's, uh, it's this is business talk. <laughs> I can remember, I can vividly remember sitting at my desk and being like, oh, well, what's going on? When I say my desk as well, I was at my Xbox. So I would have had Xbox controller in hand playing away on the old Fortnite, having the crack. And then my phone beeps. And it would have been, it would have been the Serenity group chat at the time when I was in management. And it, they would have said, there's a new team. There's a new team on the block. And I'm like, oh, well. That's that's interesting, and then I had to I had to talk with at the time it was Queasy and Mexi, who couldn't really they couldn't really understand what it was they were reading. They were given contracts by by uh, Enterprise themselves, and they wanted a bit of a clarity on the matter. So I just said, oh, sorry, and Mage as well. I forgot about Mage. Mage as well, but they wanted a bit of clarity on the matter and. Uh, yeah, I helped them as much as I could. An awful lot of money went into that very first Enterprise team. An awful lot of money for the time that they had him as well. And you have to think, for the amount of time that they would have had players of that calibre, with a, I want to call followings of their calibre, massive followings across the board, I think at the time you'd have someone like Mexi bringing in massive, or was it, is it YouTube numbers he brings? I think it was YouTube, where he had a huge Twitter following. I think he has a good Instagram following as well. Mage, massive on YouTube. Uh, Queasy brought in good, uh, he was just performing very well at the time, I believe. I don't know what, at the time, I, say, I did not know too too much about Queasy. Then there was Queasy. Uh, Trulex, again, same as Queasy, performing very well. And you kind of wonder, well... All of this investment going in, surely they got something back out of it. Surely they were able to make something worthwhile of what they were watching. Or should I say, for what they were spending. And this is my... This is my uh, biggest issue. They didn't. They didn't get anything out of that. At least from my outside perspective. People may remember as well, if I can find anything about it, they bought a house they bought a whole house they had everything set they were ready for content they wanted to push out content the way that a good team should but as is the narrative with Fortnite players and with well, I want to say specifically loads of uh, UK based Fortnite players they were terrified they were truly terrified to get behind a camera and to I, I call it IRL content but it's you know it's in real life content it's the in real life content that puts a face to well, the business. It puts a face to the business. It brings a face to the community. It builds up that interaction. 
and they just they, they didn't have it. Like, surely there must have been nothing more disappointing if you're a 14 year old and you're loving Fortnite, you're having the greatest time of your life, and you're thinking, wow, this Enterprise team look really good. I can't wait. Oh my god, they got a house. They might make YouTube videos together. This could be good. It could be phase, what the phase, New York house 2.0. And then whatever the fuck happened, they didn't make any real content out of it. They just did a house tour afterwards and they, well, they released half the players then. Like, where can you pinpoint the error? Where do you pinpoint the error? And there's, there's one very, very obvious place, in my opinion, where that could be pinpointed. Content. Content, content, content. Is the whole key issue there. No content came out, so what well, Enterprise's numbers could have went out of this world. It could have blown up altogether. No content, no real substance, nothing to gain from it. They haven't established themselves as a powerhouse in esports, so they can't get away with just signing good talent. So if you were to look at someone like a team like G2, for example, you'd th- think of players like is it G2 Jack as well? He's not, I don't think he's notoriously known for his IRL content or for stuff he does community based. He performs well, but that's as an esports powerhouse. They already have that fan base. They could sell I don't know a day's worth of fucking merchandise, and they'd make a lot more. They, in fact. They, with a day's worth of merchandise, they would make more than Enterprise have over the course of their entire existence. And that's an issue. That's a huge issue for a business that pledged $2.5 million towards their esports side of things. $2.5 million. Come on. So, with, the, with, with no return as regards content, I, in, my, in my personal opinion... Every investment they've made as regard players so far has amounted to nothing. It's given them no value. Maybe if you want to talk about content, I believe when it comes to their TikTok and their Instagram, they're doing just fine at the moment. They're doing just fine. But that growth could accelerate and go twice as big if they just force that more. If they force that content narrative a lot more. Like right now, for example, I'm looking at their Instagram here. 29.1k followers to note. They've been around since May, which is... I think now, bear in mind, May is a rough estimation. I might actually just fact-check myself real quick. Okay, I'm looking at their Twitter right now, and I can see tweets from as early as the 21st of April. However, their first signing they announced was on May the 3rd with Queasy. So, that'd be... May is the 5th month. So, through May... June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and now into February is 10 months. In 10 months, they have just short of 30,000 followers. That will come down to 3K followers per month. Um, 3K followers a month, and that would then work out as about 750 weekly, maybe 800 weekly. My issue with that number is they're putting in so much more money than any of these other teams. They are funneling money into this team and they've had no return. They haven't followed the same model that maybe the likes of TNA have. TNA immediately got that house. They've got creators in there and they're trying to force that content. And they've they've already started to make... They've already started to turn green, I'd imagine now, with the likes of G Fuel and Respawn hopping on straight away. However, now I'd like to think that Enterprise have... How would I put this? They've seen the light, essentially. And when I say they've seen the light, they are looking at creators, genuine creators, who are going to force out content. They've picked up Savid, for example. Savid, massive Irish creator. Gotta love Savid. Savid's essentially... He he helped kickstart my whole brand as it came to streaming and towards whatever platform it had. Save got save it got behind that, and I'm forever grateful. And I believe they got Drollby as well, who also pumps out content, pumps out videos. He can have it's that subliminal messaging when you have enterprise here, enterprise there. It's always in the back of their mind. Play enterprise, enterprise GG. That has to be in their head. Their Instagram and TikTok got the content now, and they're being able to work on that. So. That's a good positive to take from it. They've managed to build on their past mistakes by using, I want to call them stagnant players. 
players they would have got who maybe would have, I don't know, got a fucking placement on a leaderboard to players who are now for- forcing, pushing out that content and really showing somewhat return on investment, some numbers that they can really pitch towards advertisers. So, what I said I was going to do when I was starting the series, it's this whole idea of, you know, business or brutal. I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you what I like, tell you what I dislike, and give you that confirmation. What I like, the change they made recently, going for actual creators, creators who know what they're doing. What I dislike, the amount of money they funneled in. And maybe just how one-dimensional they are as a team. They're only in... They're only in uh, Fortnite as it stands. And they haven't... I Well, especially now while a game like, I want to say, Valorant is in its infancy. Surely they make a move now. Surely they make a move now. So, on this right side, what I like. New signings. Actual creator work. They're actually going to be able to push out numbers. Easier for advertising. And... What was the last part? Shit, I forgot. Well, yeah, that's the primary part. Their funding, and a good source of funding at that. Fair play to Rob Maxwell. Guy's probably got uh, fairly deep pockets, to say the very least. Then on my left, I'm going to put it as simple as I can. Old signings. No content. Socials are good as it stands, but for what they've put in, no good. Waste of money, waste of their own time, one dimensional. One game. They're in one game. That's my issue there. So now I will get to my verdict as such. This is how I'm going to decide whether I like a team, whether I think they're worthwhile, or whether I think they got a lot of work to do, or if they're just if they're just fucking useless to be outright honest with you. My verdict for Enterprise, play Enterprise is that at the moment, for the amount of money that they've guzzled into that team, right now, balls. Balls. Brutal. Absolutely terrible. Right now, worst... If if you were given that sort of money, I'd imagine someone who had that creative mind could have already pushed and made that return already. But, they started to make that turn already. So, right now, they may be brutal, but in a month's time even, in a month... They could already turn it around and make it a serious, serious business. Like, I, sh- I don't think I should be having this this uh, sort of a review for a team off the size that they can. They have such... With the funding they have, their potential widens so much. So, so much. And I don't think people really understand that. But until that funding can be justified, until it can be met and maybe... And what? Profit can come in the long run. For the time being... It's useless.